Expanding Your Search and Stopping for Directions podcast with Brent Bailey. And at the tech booth, Jody Cook Bailey and Luke Cardio. We are growing our circles of connections and knowledge together with encouraging conversations and positive communications. And now, Brent Bailey. And happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Expanding Your Search and Stopping for Directions. It's a great day. It's Friday. Woohoo! The 26th of February. Hope you're having a great day where you are. We are here in the studio. We have a fantastic show for you today. We have the legendary voice actor, the voice of Michelangelo from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and The Tick. I'm call, of course I'm talking about Townsend Coleman. He's going to be out here in just yeah. a few minutes. And now let's go over to the tech boot to let's check in with Jody and Luke. And guys, it's Friday. Yep, it's Friday. And it is a big, it's a big thank Friday. God. Yes, because it's the it twenty, Friday. it's yes. the twenty sixth. Now let me say a couple things yeah. here before you get into. Today is my grandfather Howard's uh, birthday, and he would have been ninety nine today. Ooh. Oh wow. wow! Yeah, ninety nine years old today, and so uh, happy birthday to him. And now, th- this also kind of makes it special because today, uh, of course, both of you know Caleb, but my cousin Caleb, uh, he's getting married today. Yes, so is. congratulations, oh, cool. Caleb congratulations. and Lauren. We love you. Congratulations on the nuptials. I do not pay enough attention to Facebook because I have no <laughs> idea. Yep. Yes, so sir. Cool. Yep. Yes, sir. So today cool. is the big day. Congratulations, so. Caleb. Yeah. So. <laughs> happy uh, birthday. I mean, happy. No, I don't Happy <laughs> wedding day. Happy, happy wedding birth day. Birth of happy your birthday, marriage day. Happy birthday, Papa, and happy wedding day. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, so let's uh, let's get into it. What's going on in the country today, Jody? It's well, you know what? Since we were talking about a wedding, today is National Tell a Fairy Tale Day. So, like Cinderella, like Snow Cinderella, White, exactly. I mean, anything, and the Beast. I mean, we live in fairy tale land here in right. Orlando. Yeah. I, although it doesn't always feel like it when you're driving on I four, but you know when you enter the. Property, I was gonna say, as soon as you get on, off the boat or the train, you're in. You're in. It fairy feels tale like land. you're you're I mean, out, you're there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, fairy tale day. I mean, I, I I grew up, you know, with fairy tales, and and then with Disney. I mean, you've got. All of the Disney princesses, and yeah. it just you know it's it's a fun fun day. It to is celebrate. so so tell one tell it not, not you specific. I was today is national yeah, tell, tell a fairy, fairy tale. tale day. I, so, I watched yeah. I watched Snow White for the first time like a, a couple of weeks ago, and like I was, the old one, like yeah, the cartoon. Yeah, and I was just blown away by like at the thought of like oh wow this was hand drawn. Yeah, like yeah, Did this you had s- to have taken. Long. Years. Yeah. Years. Like, this is have, insane. Have you seen the meme that's out there where they uh, they show Christopher Robin walking yeah. through with Pooh Bear behind him, but then they show Mowgli from Jungle Book, and it's literally the same motion and the same movements, yeah. same frame rate. Everything Amazing. he's doing exactly the same. So then they start comparing other Disney movies. Oh. And even though it's drawn differently to look like a different character, they were just copying over the frame rate of their original. Just to, I mean, you got to think about how many they how were cranking yeah. out. They had yeah. to do some. It's yeah. it's the it's the copy and copy paste, and paste. Yeah. of the day. Yeah. But I mean, it's so many of the. Uh, they all had so similar movements, and it's because. It was drawn that way once, and then they would just lay a new thing on and trace over that. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, so. think about the way graphic design works today. I mean, you get you import your object or you know yeah. whatever, so you're reusing things all the time. So I yep. mean, you can't really fault them for that. Somebody said, somebody said when they posted it, they said, "My childhood is in question now." Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm questioning exactly. everything. <laughs> so. It's so cool though to see all of that. that so. Yeah, that's super cool. I yeah. love looking at like really old vintage Disney art. Um, just because I just think it's just so cool, and, and usually it's very pricey because it is vintage and it's mm. you know worth a lot of money. That's so true. Obviously. Oh, and hey, we have uh, um, the niece of a, of a Disney animator that was coming to the church, Caitlin's Caitlin's uncle. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah he that's worked true. on all the that's like right. he drew Genie. That's amazing. He drew Genie for Aladdin. I didn't know yeah. that. That's so cool. It is very cool. So, I don't know how we got onto animation for yeah. fairy tales, but well, because you know, because Disney. So yeah, Disney. 
All the fairy tales. So anyway, yeah. So maybe drop it down and tell us your. Yeah, who's what's your favorite fairy fairy tale? tale. Yeah, what is it? Um. So um. Yeah. So I love Beauty and the Beast. Peter and the Wolf. Oh yeah. That's an old one. Does Aladdin count? Because I'll go with Aladdin. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It does. Okay. Let's move on. So it's also Pistachio Day. Ooh. Wonderful pistachios. Yes. Yes. uh, Good. Those, those are good. They I are good. A lot yeah. of pistachios growing up. Did you ever rank the pink, the pink ones? There's pink ones. Yeah, I think I have. They yeah. Kinda, yeah, and they they stay in your lips, and then. You know, I really started liking them a lot. They're when, really good, though. When I'll we would that. um, ride very rarely would ride in first class on, um, I'd say on American Airlines, and they'd serve you um, a cup full of the different mixed nuts, but the pistachios are always my favorite. Yeah. When they come out of the shell all green and stuff, it's just so my good. mouth starts watering. Yeah, but really they make good. some that, that they've done. I don't know what what they've done to them, but the, the shell, everything's pink. Hmm. Yeah. It'll stain your fingers, though, so oh, whatever it is. Yeah, so. I've never heard about that. So happy Pistachio Day. It also is Skip the Straw skip Day. The straw What's that day. mean? Just that drink means, it right out of the cup? Yes, drink it right out of the cup. And the whole reason is so that, you know, most straws are plastic, even though they're trying to go to paper. Oh, wait, this yeah, is Yeah, you got that. It is a straw. That is a straw. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, trying to... I'm doing to, it. Prevent plastic from being thrown away, and it winds up going into the ocean and killing many of our precious um, ocean <sighs> creatures. Um, so, um, yeah, so skip the straw day. Well, what if you live in a, in a community where they're using paper straws most of the time? Honestly, to be honest, can you skip I, I really, that straw too? Yes, because I it's a piece of junk anyway. Piece, yeah, yeah, please, please. And then skip you throw it. it away. To me, it's still literally. I will say, makes a mess. I will say this: they are trying with a, a, a new kind of plastic straw that uh-huh. that is easily broken down. Mm. The problem is, it breaks down as soon as you as soon as you jam it through <laughs> yes, the lid. It does. It it just, now they do sell like metal straws, right? And a that, lot of people are know, doing that. that. Yeah, so that, those are good too. But you so. got to wash them constantly. You do, but yep. you know, you carry them around with you. They keep it with you all the time. Yeah. So. So. All right, guys, that's what's going on around the country. I've got a great guest today. Stay tuned for Townsend Coleman as we expand your search. Today, my guest is Townsend Coleman, and he is a veteran Hollywood voice actor, and I know him best as the voice of Michelangelo from the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He has also been uh, in various other things, commercials, many of the things that you've seen on TV. Uh, He was also the tick in the animated series. Uh, He's also been the voice of Must See TV on NBC, Uh, all the Tonight Show promos. He is currently... Uh, the daily promo announcer for Live with Kelly and Ryan on ABC, and he also plays the character of Jason Whitaker on the long-running radio drama Adventures in Odyssey. Please welcome to Expanding Your Search and Stopping for Directions, Townsend <laughs> Coleman, everybody. Townsend. <laughs> hey, man. How are you? <laughs> so good, man. It's so great to have you here, uh, and pleasure to finally meet you. Uh, I, I, Brian and Jenny have, have, have talked about you for a long time, uh, and so it's a gr- it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Um, first of all, how have you been doing uh, since uh, the world got turned on its head with COVID? How's everything going in L.A.? Well, Brent, I'll tell you, actually, um, it hasn't, and I hate to say this because I'm probably one of the few, um, but uh, it hasn't really affected me personally that much, at least in terms of work. Uh, because I work right here from my home studio uh, every day anyway. Um, But in terms of being able to travel uh, and see my kids out of town, um, I've got four kids, uh, three of whom have kids of their own. So all my grandkids live uh, in cities other than Los Angeles. So I have to go travel to see them. And I've been uh, been really missing that. Last year, my oldest grandson uh, graduated high school in, uh, in Denver in the Denver area. And um, we had all planned a big trip to go see, you know, and and be a part of that uh, graduation celebration and obviously couldn't. And so it's stuff like that that's uh, made it really tough for for me and my family and of course the rest of the world. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, and I'm getting a little stir crazy. I will say that, you know, I mean, (laughs) I sometimes have to just go out for a drive. You know, and open the, the, the sunroof and the and the windows to just get some fresh air. Now, I know California is not known to get too cold. Uh, has it has, Is the weather agreeing still, or is the rest of the country starting to affect there, too? 
<laughs> well, listen, it's it's times like this that I'm grateful to live in Southern California. <laughs> You know, when it's uh, 72 degrees here and, uh, you know, minus 72 practically (laughs) uh, in so many other parts of the country. Seeing what's going on in Texas is just nuts to me. Um, But, yeah, actually, Brent, it has been cold. Uh, We've had some rainy weather and some um, some cold snaps that uh, are a little uncharacteristic for Southern California, but uh, but certainly not unbearable. So. Well, that's good. And at least you can go for those drives. A lot of folks are snowed in right now. So, yeah, all right, let's yeah. let's just talk a little bit about your career. I know it is a very storied one. Uh, you've been the voice of many people's childhood. <laughs> and, um, um, but let's talk about how you get st- you got started. What was your first uh, uh, job in, in well, voice acting, yeah, at least? <laughs> in, in, in the voiceover business or in the voice business period, my, my first real job was uh, uh, breaking into radio in Cleveland, Ohio uh, in 1974, 75. And uh, it was something that I'd wanted to do ever since I was a kid because it's something that my dad did when he was younger and we used to live in the Denver area. And, uh, and so I did. I, I broke into radio, ended up uh, becoming a, a rock jock there in Cleveland um, uh, for 10 years. Uh, at various uh, stations and formats. And then, uh, but it was during that time that I discovered voiceovers uh, in the Cleveland area and the freelance voiceover uh, realm where I could actually make money uh, outside of the radio stations that I was working for and doing commercials for locally. Um, And uh, found that I really, really liked it. And uh, uh, after 10 years uh, on the air in uh, radio, uh, got to a point where I was making more money a year doing my freelance voiceover work than I was working six days a week at the radio station. It just didn't make any sense to me anymore. So I quit radio and uh, in, uh, in uh, June of 84. Uh, and, um, and then right on the heels of that, uh, got noticed that the house we were um, renting in Cleveland was being sold and we needed to be out by the end of September of 84. So I took that opportunity. I had just turned 30. I took that opportunity to, to try and take stock of what I really wanted to do. And I had felt like I had pretty much done everything in Cleveland that I could do within the entertainment uh, industry. And uh, I mean, I was modeling, I was doing a TV show. I was pulling the Ohio lottery numbers on TV every night. I was doing <laughs> musical theater. I was, I was doing everything I could think to do there. And so it was time to move, and uh, so I moved to, to L.A. in 84 and have been here ever since. And, uh, and my, my, my real break, I suppose, if you will, uh, came here in town. About six months after I moved here, I got an audition for a cartoon series called Inspector Gadget. And I had never given any thought to doing cartoons. It just kind of wasn't on my radar because it wasn't what I wanted to do. I came out here to be an on-camera actor. But the voiceover thing, because I had done so much of it back in Cleveland, just kind of grabbed me by the throat and never let go. And for that, I'm uh, eternally grateful, actually, <laughs> because I, I would much rather be doing what I'm doing now than having been continue to beat my head on on the wall trying to get an on camera career going. So. And so your 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 first your first job is inspect is on the Inspector Gadget. What character? Did you play? Yeah, I, I played a character named Corporal Cape Man. He was Inspector Gadget's uh, little right-hand <laughs> assistant. I'll help you, Inspector! You know, he was a, a goofy little goon like that. But uh, but it broke me into animation and opened my eyes to kind of the possibility of, of what this business had to offer. I mean, I just never really even thought of it. But there I was in my very first session um, sitting with uh, Maurice LaMarche and uh, Frank Welker, me and Don Adams. Wow. And uh, yeah, and uh, I didn't know who, who Mo or, or Frank were at the time. Uh, come to find out that Frank is a legend in this business <laughs> yes. and has been for years. Um, and, uh, and same with Maurice LaMarche, my goodness. Uh, but that was Mo's first uh, series as well. But of course I knew who Don Adams was and I had watched him on TV uh, as a kid, you know, in Get Smart, one of my favorite shows. Sure. And, um, you know, and so I was a bit starstruck, but couldn't believe that, you know, six months earlier, I was living in Cleveland, Ohio, and here I am sitting in a recording studio with Don Adams and these other, you know, just crazily talented cats and and, and me. <laughs> and I thought, how in the world did this happen? It was, it was crazy. But that's how it broke in. And so I sort wow. of tried parlay it from that into more of that because I had so much fun doing the cartoons 
that I asked my agents to send me out on more of those kind of auditions. They did, and I got in over at Hanna-Barbera, did some shows over there, and then um, booked a show called uh, uh, Fraggle Rock. and uh, Which we see called, peeking behind you there. <laughs> show called Teen Wolf, yeah. Yeah, that's Gobo. His, that's the character yep. I did on Fraggle Rock. Yeah. Oh, Wembley, your <laughs> rock dust allergy's all in your head. Yeah. Um, but we'll go exploring in outer space with my uncle traveling Matt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, so I, so I really found that I, I had a, a bit of a facility for this um, kind of little niche, this little corner of the voiceover business and, um, and enjoyed it. I mean, just like the heck out of it. So, so I, I got very fortunate and then I, uh, on the heels of Fraggle Rock, um, booked uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and um, uh, was lucky enough to get the character of Michelangelo on that. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, I, I know that that is uh, that that had to have just been huge because that that cartoon was everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Still is. Yes, it is. It still is. <laughs> I don't know how many iterations of the series there have been now, but. Uh, but there, uh, I mean, my goodness, my buddy Rob Paulson, who who was on the original series with, with us uh, in 1987, 88, um, was on the 2012 series. Uh, he was Raphael on our show and Donatello on the 2012 uh, series. And then the next iteration of it that came along, um, he actually was the voice director on. So, uh, wow. you know, we've, we've had our chances to sort of keep our our fingers in the uh, TMNT pie for for a few decades here. Yeah, both very- of my both of my kids uh, watch the old series still too. And when I told them you were going to be on the program today, my my ten he just turned ten on Monday. Uh, he was like, "Really? He's my favorite." So, <laughs> <laughs> will you tell him, Cowabunga, dude? <laughs> you are totally, totally righteous and bodacious. That's- Awesome. I love how you can just get right in there like you did it yesterday. Uh, all right. Now, some folks don't know this about you, but you also like to work on the stage and actually work you know, with other folks. You know, I, I, tell us a little bit about that. Well, that's actually kind of how I got started in, in Cleveland more than anything was um, was, do, was doing local theater in, in Cleveland, community theater and, and some semi-pro stuff. And uh, started doing musicals there, and um, it's long been a uh, a love of mine. I fell in love with the theater uh, in fourth grade when I went with the rest of my class on a class trip to go see uh, a production of um, that uh, uh, Peter Pan. I was going to say The Wizard of Oz, but it wasn't. It was Peter Pan, and I was blown away by it. And one of my classmates' brothers, older brothers, was playing Michael in this production, and I thought. This, I mean, all they, they had the kids flying and everything in, in this production. And I was mesmerized and I thought, wow, I, I, I know, I know a famous, per- I know the brother of a famous person. <laughs> and, and so ever since fourth grade, I've, I've wanted to do theater. I did it in junior high and high school, uh, went off to University of Colorado in Boulder. And in my uh, second semester of my freshman year, ended up getting the lead in the university production there in 1973 and uh and that was a a big shot in the arm for me and you know and so then i i i went back to cleveland and uh just started getting involved in theater there so it's something that i um once i moved out here in 84 the last show that i had done in cleveland was pirates of penzance and uh i played the role of frederick in that and and uh that was in 1982 i ended up not getting back into theater here in in la uh Un, until 2013 so so 31 years it took me to actually get back on stage and really the reason for it was because um, my kids were young at the time and um, it would have been a little disruptive to our schedules um, plus the fact that in 1993 I got after a fluke audition got this incredible gig over at NBC voicing their musty TV promos uh, and the promos for uh, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and and so so I had to be down at NBC in Burbank every night at uh, about six thirty uh, weeknights, and that really precluded doing any theater. And I did that for sixteen years, so it was a long stretch of not being able to pursue anything uh, in the evening. 
And, uh, and so finally in 2013, um, uh, ended up uh, running into a buddy of mine who was very involved in a theater company, a Christian theater company here in town uh, called Actors Co-op. And uh, he poked me in the chest and he said, you need to be in co-op. And I said, okay. Um, and, and so I uh, actually got a call from a buddy of mine who was uh, directing a show um, and wanted me to come audition for a part in it about uh, three or four months later. And, and I got this part, got back on stage in uh, 2013 and just had a blast and remembered why I loved it so much. Of course, I was really nervous, too, because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to know how to remember lines anymore since I hadn't remembered, had to memorize lines in 30 years. You know, everything I do is read off a script. Yeah. And most of it's, you know, 5, 10 or 15 seconds long these days. So, yeah. you know, not not a lot of mental uh, taxation there. Uh Let's talk a little bit about uh, now. You, you've you've voiced so many of the cartoons. Uh, you're currently doing Kelly and Ryan's promos. Um, uh, you were the Tick. Uh, you, you've indeed <laughs> evil you, doer beware. <laughs> you face the Tick. It's my buddy right back yeah, there. there. He is, yeah. Uh, so you've Keith. you've had a, a really great career, but you're you're also a believer, and and I really wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that about. There's so much talk about what it's like being a believer in Hollywood, but it hasn't really seemed to hurt your career at all. Well, I don't think it's hurt my career. You know, listen, I I give God all the credit for my career. Yeah. So, you know, I remember I remember years ago when I was going through a particularly difficult time uh, in my career, uh, difficult in that it was slower than I was used to it being, and I didn't like that, and I didn't understand it, and. And I remember talking to my agent at one at one point, and and he said, "Look, don't try and make sense of it, Tony. Just let it be what it is, and and it'll happen when it's supposed to happen." And I thought, "Wow, that is so true." And I thought that was such great advice, and 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 yet at the same time, I also tended to look at when I would start to get really caught up in not booking something or not booking a role or not booking a part in some or not booking in a because back in those early days I was still trying to pursue on camera stuff um, I, 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 I would get I would get frustrated and then I had to remember that you know as much as I love my agents here in town my real agent ultimately to me personally is God you know, God's going to be the one who's going to have me get the gigs he wants me to have, and I won't get the ones he doesn't want me to have. Is the is the way I look at it, you know, and uh, and and so as long as I can maintain at least a modicum of that mentality, yeah. I'm 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 pretty okay, you know, because uh, because it's it's way too easy to get caught up in this business and get caught up in the frustration of it and get caught up in the anxiety of it and and if there's one thing that i've i've really learned to have to try and not only grapple with but grasp onto is the the is just the concept of contentment just being okay with the way things are where they are right now you know you always try and take those steps to make them better to further yourself, to further your career, to further um, your life, uh, but you you do it with you do it with a sense that, or at least I try and do it with a sense that, look what I've already got, look what I already have had, look what I've already been ex able to experience, you know, uh, it's been plenty, and so I always try and remind myself of that to just be content with where I am right now, and. And not worry about tomorrow, not worry about next week, not worry about what the future is going to hold. Because God says, we don't know what that's like. <laughs> we don't know what's around the next corner, you know, and that's the very essence of faith is not knowing, you know, but it's the assurance of knowing what you don't know is coming, <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense to you. Yeah. you know? yeah. I mean, I, of course it makes sense to you, but, but <laughs> so, so that's how I look at it and, and, uh, and, and try and rest in it. Folks, this is Townsend Coleman. He is a veteran of the voice acting community in Los Angeles. He has voiced probably many uh, voices in your childhood. We are so grateful for your time today. Uh, Thanks, thank dude. you so much for coming on and being uh, and just dropping some positivity on our audience. And uh, you know, um, my wife, when she found out you're doing Kelly and Ryan's promos, she was like, 
I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So uh, she's a big live. fan. <laughs> yeah, big fan. Hey, listen, have a great oh, rest great. of your day and uh, do some more great work. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it, Brent. You All too. Right. All right. Take okay. care. That's Townsend Bye-bye. Coleman, everybody. And now let's stop for directions. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 4, verse number 10, for who has despised the days of small things? Another translation of that says small beginnings. For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord, which can scan to and fro, fro throughout the whole earth. There comes a time in our life where we look at where we are right now and it's, it's really tempting to be dissatisfied. It's a whole other thing to just be as far as you can go. And I want to encourage you today, wherever you are, know that God's plans in, include the full picture. And you may not be completely satisfied where you are right now, but then you may have room to still improve. I was listening to Townsend talk about leaving Cleveland. He had done everything he could do there. And then he moved on to LA to to really establish himself as this illustrious career. What is it that you can do right now? Can you take some inventory of your own life where you look and say, am I just dissatisfied? Or or perhaps am I am I at a place that I could just I could just do more and maximize where I'm at? That, that is what the question that we need to answer today is. The Bible says don't despise where you are, even if it is a time of being small. The truth is, God's got great plans that as soon as you're ready, you can step into. And when that happens, that's when you take a step to the next level. Take some time to do some inventory today, amen? That's going to wrap it up for the show today. I'm so grateful to Jody and to Luke for another great broadcast. I'm so grateful to our guest Townsend Coleman, The Tick, and uh, Michelangelo and many other characters. Thanks for coming on today, Townsend. Until next time, I hope you found what you were looking for as you took the time to expand your search and stop for directions. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Connect with us on at Expanding Your Search on Facebook and Instagram and at Expanding Search on Twitter. Relive any of our episodes on YouTube. We're available wherever podcasts are found, including Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. You can also download the Direction Ministries app on iOS, Android, Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Take some time to 